So what is a touched event? A touched event is a property of all parts in Roblox that fires when another object touches it. By fires, I mean it basically announces to the world that it's been touched. So when you walk on a brick, it says, hey, a left leg touched me, a right leg touched me, or really when any part touches it, it knows. The trick is that we can connect to this touched event and say that when a specific part is touched, we want to do something cool, like maybe kill a player or teleport them, or maybe give them a power up to walk really fast. The possibilities are endless. Now let's get into a demonstration so I can show you the code that makes this happen and break it down for you. Open up Roblox Studio, go to View, open Explorer, Properties, and Output. Now go to Model, insert a part, and go to Explorer and insert a script into that part. It'll come up with Print Hello World, and we can go on and delete that. And now we need to get a reference to the part that we just inserted. So we'll do local brick equals script.parent. And now this brick variable is equal to the parent of the script. If we look in the Explorer, then you can see that the parent of the script is the part that we just inserted. And now we need to access the touch event or touched event of the brick. And as we type, you can see that it says touched and touch ended. And there's lightning bolts next to them. The little lightning bolts mean that they're events. And I'll be covering both touched and touched ended in this tutorial. But basically the difference is that Touched fires when you begin to touch a part, and touch ended fires when you stop touching a part. But we'll do the touched for now, and we'll do colon connect. And I'll cover why we're doing a colon versus a period, because I'm sure you've seen the, seen the period before, and the colon's a little bit different. Um, and it's a little bit more complex, but I'll, I'll cover that at the end. So for now we'll do colon connect and as we type that it comes up with a little box that says roblox script connection connect function func and that function func right there means that we're supposed to pass this connect function a function as the parameter and it says it registers a function to call each time an event is triggered and what that means is that the function we pass it between the parentheses right here will be connected to the touched event and called every time the touched event is actually fired. So right here, we need to give it a function and we could do whatever we want. Let's do a print subscribe now. And that's a good suggestion, by the way, if you're learning anything from this video and if you wanna learn anything from me in the future. So this right here, this would work just fine. And when the touched event is triggered, this function we just created would be called but I'm going to show you another way that you could do this as well. That's just as effective and probably a little bit cleaner and easier to understand. So we'll go up here and I just copied that function, but now we have to give it a name. So I'll call it do something. And now we need to put the name right here. So line seven right here does the exact same thing as lines nine through 11. The reason we don't have the parentheses like you might no normally see at the end of the function is that we don't actually wanna call it just yet. Adding the parentheses at the end, like that will actually call the function, but we just want to give the touched event a reference to our function. So by just giving the name, now the touched event has a reference to our function and whenever it wants, it can basically add the parentheses and call the function. So we'll just go ahead and go on with the example that we have here. And let's get into the game and see how this works. I'll go ahead and click play. And now once the game loads, you'll notice that it's already printed subscribe now once. And the reason for that is that as the game loads, our part and the base plate touch. So it touches once, so it's already printed subscribe now once. And I'll actually show you later on in the video how you can check to see what part touched it. So you can say, you know what, actually if the base plate touches it, I don't wanna do anything, but maybe if a character touches it, I wanna do something. So I'll walk over it once, and now you'll notice that it's printed subscribe now 11 more times. That's why there's a times 12. If you can see that, it's really small, but let's see, we'll walk over it one more time, and now it's printed 21 times. So again, it's printed a lot more, which means our touch event has fired a lot more. The reason for that is that as we walk over it, different parts of our foot and leg touch it, and every time a different part of our foot or leg touches it, then our touch event is fired and our function is called. 
So just like I'll show you how to check to see what part touched it, I'll also show you how to limit how often something happens so that every time the touch event is triggered, we can actually check to see, you know what, if we've done something in the last second or millisecond, I don't wanna do it again. So that's very useful, especially if you have a system where you walk over it and maybe get some points or an upgrade, level up, you know. You only want that to happen once. You don't want a player to walk over something and get, you know all of a sudden get a million points or level up 10 times. You only want that to happen once. So let's go back to the code and I'll show you how to do all this. Now that we're back in the code, it's time for me to show you the crazy complicated step to figure out what part touched our brick. It's actually not that complicated. All you need to do is add one parameter name right here, call it other part. So if we add one parameter to our function, now we actually have what touched our brick. So if we do print other part, this will actually print the part that touched our brick. The reason for that, it's not magic. It's actually built into the Roblox game engine. So when the brick is touched, the game engine automatically passes what part touched our brick to this function. So no matter what, the first parameter to whatever functions right here will be whatever part touched your brick or whatever this touch event is connected to. So I'll say that one more time. Roblox automatically gives this function one parameter and that parameter is whatever part is touching what you're connecting this event to and it's i don't know that from you know just making it up or contacting some people at roblox the reason i know that is i checked the application programming interface or the api and i'll actually do a deep dive into that and explain it a little bit later in the video but for now let's just see how this works and run it in game i'll delete this print subscribe now and now let's actually run the game once the game loads you'll notice it printed base plate that's because it printed the part that touched it first, which would be the base plate. I'll walk over it and it says, you know, left foot twice, left upper leg, left lower leg, right lower leg. So it's just printing all of the parts to touch it. And as you can see, you know, right foot now, left foot. So pretty cool, but now let's do something a little bit more interesting with this. Now let's make it so that our function only does something when a player touches the brick. So we can go ahead and delete this line right here. And now we do need to do an if statement to check to see if the other part actually belongs to a player. So do if other part up here, and then find first child, which is a humanoid. And I'll explain that line in just a second. But then right here, this is what we'll execute if the other part actually belongs to a player. So the brick dot brick color equals brick color dot random. So that'll set the brick or brick right here, the brick color of it to a random color every time a player touches the part. And this line is a little bit more complicated, but I'll describe it with an example in a second. First, let's just see if this works. You'll notice that when the game loads, the brick is the same color as before, even though the function or the event fired because the base plate touched the part, it did not change the color because the base plate is not a player. If I walk over it, the part changes colors. It changes colors multiple times. I still need to show you how to limit that so that it would only change once if I do this or that. But for now, let's go over this if statement. So with an example, if I open up the workspace and go to my character, say my left foot right here is what touched the brick. So the touched event will fire and it will call the do something function. It will pass one parameter or argument to the function and that argument right here, other part will be equivalent to my left foot. So then it'll check to see, okay, other part or my left foot, that parent. So it'll get the parent, which is Simul in the workspace. And it'll say, find the first child, which is a humanoid. So it'll go through all the descendants of my character or all the children of my character rather, and check to see if there's a humanoid. In this case, there is a humanoid. So all of this right here will return a reference to my humanoid. So it'll basically be equal to, you know, other part dot parent. And then this will actually basically just be dot humanoid. So it's the same thing as if you were to do that. Um, 
So because it exists, it's equivalent to true and this executes. And that might sound a little bit weird, but I'll describe it a little bit more with some logic. So nil is equivalent to false and something is equivalent to true. So in the case of the base plate, let's say, say the base plate touched my part, then I will do, you know, if the base plate touched it, other part would be equivalent to the base plate. I'll check the parent of the base plate, which is the workspace. And then we'll say find the first child, which is a humanoid. I'll go through, it'll say camera, terrain, Samuel, base plate, part. Nope, none of that is a humanoid. So it returns nil. So basically this would be nil. Um, so because it's nil, it's the same thing as false. So this will not execute right here. If it was something, it'd be true. So just to describe this a little bit further, further to do, say if brick, then print will do it exists. So because our brick actually does exist, we go to you know workspace of the script right here. The parent of the script is part that exists. So because the brick exists, this will actually be read as true, and this line will execute. If we did something like this, like local nothing, then typed nothing right here, then this line would not execute because nothing is not equal to anything. And then the same if we do local nothing is equal to nil. So because nil is the same thing as false, when um, used in logic like this, this line would not execute. If that does not make sense, just make a comment down below. Um, I could potentially make a video about this in the future as well. But hopefully that makes sense. If not, let me know. But now let's continue with the tutorial. So I'll just delete these real quick. Now let's make it so that our function will only change the color of the brick at most every two seconds. So we'll come up here and we'll be adding a debounce. That's what it's typically called in programming. We'll do local debounce equals true. And we'll add another condition to this if statement. So we'll do if debounce and what we had before. So now this will only execute if debounce is equal to true. So then we'll add right here a line that says debounce equals false. And then below we'll do debounce or actually wait the two seconds and then debounce equals true again. So what happens with this is that the first time this function runs, if debounce is true, which it will be if it's the first time, then this will be true. And we'll check to see if this is also true. If a player touched it, then this will also be true. So it'll continue to execute it. If this is not a player, then I'll just stop right there. But let's say it is a player touching the part for the first time. So if this is true, then this is true because it's a player. Then debounce will be set equal to false. And then the color of the brick will be changed. And then we'll start waiting for two seconds. In the meantime, if we were to touch the brick again, this if statement would run and it'll be if false because we just set debounce equal to false the last time it ran. So then we'll stop executing. Um, so as you can see, because we changed it to false the first time and now we're waiting, the function will not run this block of code right here again until debounce is set back equal to true. So the two seconds is up and debounce is set equal to true. And now this block of code can execute again. So let's start the game and see what happens. I'll walk over to the part. You see it changes color and it only changed color once. I'll walk over it again, change colors. But if I do this, as you can see, it's only changing colors every two seconds. That's because of the debounce, it's false. And then it's finally set back to true and I can change the color again. Now, what if at some point in the game, we decide that we don't want the touched event to call our function. If you noticed before, when we type brick that touched, colon connect, it says Roblox script connection connect. What that means is that the connect function returns a Roblox script connection. We can use that Roblox script connection to disconnect the touch event from our function. So if we do local connection equals brick that touch to connect, do something, then we can wait 10 seconds. And then after those 10 seconds, we'll actually disconnect our connection. So this after 10 seconds, will disconnect the touch event from our function and it will no longer work. So let's play the game and see how it works. I'll walk over and touch the brick, it changes colors. I wait two seconds, touch it again, it changes colors. Two more seconds, 
and at this point it's been disconnected and our function is no longer or called every time the event is fired. So really quick before I get into the more interesting part of the video where I show you the deep dive into how I know all this information, I'm going to show you the touch ended event. I'm going to delete the disconnect at the bottom and then change the event to touch ended and then run the game. I'll walk over to the part and touch it and it does seem like it fires immediately when I touch it, but it actually is only firing when I stop touching it. And the reason it appears as if it's firing when I touch it is that there's actually a fraction of a second where you know my foot or leg touches it and untouches it. So this does only fire when you stop touching it, but it's a little bit finicky. If you're still watching at this point, I hope that means that I've helped you out. So don't forget to like the video to help me out and subscribe for more content in the future. Right now we're gonna go into a deep dive into the Roblox API. So go to developer.roblox.com and click on the API reference. I'll put a link in the description. And here we can learn everything there is to know about Roblox. So if we click on part, then we can read everything there is to know about parts. We can scroll down and read about the properties and the functions there are to call on parts and then the events. So right here, we have the touched and the touch ended events and we can read about them. It says the touched event is fired when a part comes in contact with another part. We can click the function touched and read about that function. It tells you the parameters. There's an other part param parameter. It says the other part that came in contact with the given part. And it tells you exactly how it works. You know, for instance, if part A bumps into part B, then part A touch fires with part B, and part B fires with part A. So if we go back, then we can also click on Roblox script signal. Roblox script signal is an event. So touched is a Roblox script signal or an event. And it tells you that you know, it gives a way for user defined functions known as listeners um, to be called when something happens in the game. So for example, it gives us the that, that's the um, do something function that we created as a listener. And down here, it talks about the function connect that we can call on it. So that's why we can do touched colon connect. And it says it establishes a function to be called whenever the event is raised. That's our function. This was do something. Well, this was touched. Uh, this first part, the Roblox script signal was touched. And it says it returns a Roblox script connection object associated with the connection. That's how I knew it returned that connection. So if I click this, I can read about the connection and it says there's a function called disconnect that we can call on it. And that's how I knew we could disconnect the connection from the event. Last but not least, I'm gonna explain the colon syntax. So why is it break that touched colon connect and other part that parent colon find for child, which is a, so you actually don't need to use the colon it's syntactic trigger, which basically just means the programming language is doing some fancy work behind the scenes for you. So instead of the colon, you can actually do period connect, but to make it work, you need to do brick dot touched and pass that as the first argument and then pass the function. So that line right there is actually the same as brick dot touched colon connect and then the function name. The reason for that, the reason that it's the same is that the colon it's just automatically behind the scenes passing what's before it as the first argument. So that's why this brick that touched period connect and then passing brick that touched as the first argument works just the same.